Hi, I'm Corey. Welcome to Creating with Scraps. Today's video will have another one of the inserts from the flips, the completed flips, flaps, and folds idea book. One of the ones that I didn't show a video for, and it's a super simple one. And um, at the end of that, I'll talk about my Etsy shop and an update for that, and then some upcoming projects. So let's get started. First, I wanted to start with a question that I've gotten a lot recently, why I only follow a few YouTubers. And for it's for a couple reasons. One, I squirrel, and, and I think it's well known that I squirrel, and I figure the more people I follow, the more likelihood I am to squirrel. And by that, I mean go off on a tangent. I don't mean squirrel the, the noun so much, but squirrel the verb, where I'm you know, focused on one thing and then something catches my eye and I go off in another direction. That's one reason. And another reason is, we all inspire each other in this creative world. I mean, you see something in scrapbooking or card making or something and you carry it over to junk journaling. And like I just watched a Tracy video that really encouraged me to go in a different direction with my February project. And we encourage and inspire each other. And I try diligently to give credit where I get the inspiration. I try also to not follow somebody completely and exactly, but to take it and make it my own. And I know that many others do the same thing. And by following just a few people, I am more apt to remember who inspired me to do what, where I got my inspiration. So that's that's another reason there. All right, this project today is a combination of things. It's in a piece that was in my Share This pack, or Share This um, stack, I should say. And it also comes a little bit from Sue from Paper Inspirations because she has a series where using up your 12 by 12 paper and this this project uses an entire sheet of 12 by 12 paper. And I've made four of them because they're going to go into the hmm, Scrap Buster Idea Books. I've got six of them in the works and these are going to be included in those. So they'll be for sale in my Etsy shop, hopefully by the end of February. But I'm working on those and they just take some time to compile and these are pieces for that. But again, it was inspired by Sue's Use Up Your 12 by 12. So I took an entire sheet of 12 by 12. But it was also inspired by Wendy from Wendy's Journal Adventures and the last video where I was inspired. This is the same basic idea. I just turned it on the side and made it into a belly band with a little journaling spot. So it takes Wendy's fabulous idea and changes it up a little bit more to give another option. And again, I mentioned that I was, uh, Tracy and I were joking the other day, I kept saying, oh, Tracy, great job with alliteration, file folder February. And she's like, no, Corey, it's file folder Friday. And I just, I had to laugh because I love the alliteration. I loved junk journal January and I'm totally doing file folder Friday in February. And that um, sparked my, a twist to my next project and I loved the Stamperia Forest options. I liked that they could be used for memorabilia, they could be used for just journaling, they could be used for photos, memorabilia, and journaling, they could be used a combination. And in February I'm going to do the same type of thing using Tracy's new Mega Mix and Match Kit and the file folder idea, combine the two. And yesterday, if you haven't seen her video, absolutely check it out because it's it's fantastic. And she has kind of an accordion file folder. Well, a whole bunch of us have made those and just as little ephemera holders and a variety of things. And I thought, I saw her video and I thought, well, why not just put that at the beginning of an album? You can use it for photos. You can use it for ephemera to put throughout the journal. And just rather than making it a separate piece that you put in, just make it the first page, the, the section of the first page on that file folder. So that's what I'm going to do again. So I was inspired, inspired by Tracy. And that happens all the time. All right, getting into this. This was a, you see my little love notes there, a belly band that opens with drop down journaling. And you can see how high tech my, my little sample to myself is. But the idea being again that you just, you know, you have a little journaling spot. It can be a hidden journaling spot or what have you. Close it, glue it down on two sides. So you've got a belly band in the back and then you've got a place here for some journaling. Or you could just glue this whole thing down and make this your belly band. Well, I played with it and I came up with four different ways to do essentially the same thing. And it is as easy as they come. 
which is really cool. Plus it uses up a whole sheet of 12 by 12 paper. All right, talking enough, let's get started. Here is one and I'll show you all four and then we'll just make one together because they're all variations of the same thing. This one, what I essentially did to start is I took 12 by 12 cardstock and I used a double-sided cardstock. I used took 12 by 12 cardstock and I cut it horizontally at three, six, nine, and nine. So I had four sections. And then I trimmed some of them down to make it a little bit smaller, a little bit um, to use those pieces. But I started with that. I cut them horizontally at three, six, and nine inches. Then I changed them up all a little bit. Some of them use a double. Well, all of them have a little bit different. Some of them use the policy envelope closure with tiny brads with a little bit bigger brad and that's a single one with an eyelet and then there's one that um, hooks in the back and has a single closure with an eyelet and then one that doesn't use an eyelet at all it just has a bit of velcro again options depending on what you've got and, and what you like to make so here this one it's that strip that horizontal strip and opens up into a belly band. So when I'm when I'm putting this on the six by six book, and I created the dimensions based on the six by six journal it's going into. I think these are five and a quarter because I like a little bit of space either way so that the page folds back and forth. Hence my measurements. So this one opens up into just a flap that closes here. And then there's a writing pad here. There's five sheets of writing paper, right? And then there's a little tuck spot where it kind of hides the uh, back of the brad that was the closure and has a little tuck spot for some journaling paper. And then the top of this one, the shelf in my craft room, I've got directly across from my eyes, is a shelf where I have some idea books. And I thought, well, why can't I make a little shelf with idea books for my journal or for my insert? And I so I did. And I just took a little bit of Tracy labels and vellum stickers that I had pieces of. You know, you often use parts of a vellum sticker. Well, I took the little leftover bits and pieces and cut them into reasonable shapes and put them in here to put on in my shelf and to decorate pages when the pages are, are ready for that. So maybe I journaled on it and I want, maybe I shouldn't put that upside down. Sorry. Uh, you know, maybe I want to do something, whoops, something like this, because I like little itty bitty bits. So maybe I want to do something like that. And so I've got these little bits right here with it. And if I were worried about them falling out, I could use one of the Tim Holtz Tiny Attacher paper clip, the little itty bitty guys, and paper clip it in. But so far it stayed pretty good. So it's got a little bit of a shelf that holds those little bitty bits. So there is one option. And just close it up. And I just put a few a few beads at the bottom and you know how to close those. So that's one. And that one opens to the right, but if I flipped it upside down, I could open it to the left, you know, just depending on what I need. Here's another one. This one uses, because it's gonna be glued into the book, right? So I didn't care so much what was on the back. So I'd glue it down here and here so that I can tuck something in the back as a belly band. I just put a piece of string on the back and use tape and a single policy closure to open it up. Now this one, I this one was a flap that opened, right? This one I glued down or closed and glued down on top of a vellum pocket. And this little vellum pocket has, you know, a journaling spot, a journaling card, journaling tag. And then this is a flip down. Again, one of those pieces of vellum sticker, just cut off a piece of the bigger sticker and then a drop down journaling spot, double sided journaling spot, tucked into the tracing paper pocket. And over here is a tuck spot on this particular flap with a pull down journaling spot. Whoops, I'm sorry, I didn't realize I wasn't in frame, I apologize, with a pull down journaling spot. And then I can just tuck that back in. And again, this kind of a closure, same, same basic construct, just a little twist on it. This one doesn't have a policy closure. This one, I put this stamp, because it says parcel post, I put this stamp that I really liked in a piece of vellum simply because it was a really bright stamp and I wanted to tone it down a little bit. So I used a 
cancellation and this for the decoration for the front. And again, it's a belly band, so I'm going to glue it down just like this and I can tuck a, I can tuck a journaling card or a tag or what have you in the back of it. This one I used Velcro. And again, I folded over an edge piece to make a spot for a journaling tag. And then here is just a little notebook again with five pieces. I don't know why I just magically like five pieces when I do this. This is the thin linen paper, so it doesn't add much bulk at all. And there is another version of it, basically the same thing. And then I decided I needed to open one on the opposite side just to give a different configuration. And then here uses the eyelet and the brad for the closure. And this particular one, because of the way, you know, it's two-sided paper, this particular piece was really, really bright. So again, I used coffee dyed tracing paper to tone it down. I just glued it right on top of that and um, toned it down a little bit. And then I folded it closed. Well, I folded it. I put my policy envelope closure in there and then I glued it down so that this wouldn't be in the way and uh, it wouldn't show. And then I just made, you know, a little pocket for a tag and then a notebook, just another one of those little mini notebooks, and close it up this way. And they're all essentially constructed the same way, you just fold in a little bit different spot. Put a little a few beads on the bottom, and there you go, four different ones. All right, do, oops, see they do fall out, so I guess I should use a paper clip. All right, let's move those to the side. I cut a couple pieces of this, and just, you don't need a scoreboard for this, you can certainly use one if you want to, but you certainly don't need one. Now, this one has, some eggs on it and it's kind of big. So when I'm folding this before I decide, so it's a 12 inch strip, three inch by 12 inch strip, you could use an eight and a half by 11, sure, it, you get to pick. It's the idea of using up a whole sheet of paper, but it could be eight and a half by 11 or 12 by 12. Either way works fine. So you have to decide what you want on top. I mean, I suppose you could make them just meet like this, but I don't really love the eggs. So maybe on this one, maybe I would just have, be mindful about where I fold it so that the eggs don't necessarily show. The eggs are gonna be in the back. So when I fold this, again, I'm not even scoring it. I'm not even using my scoreboard. I'm just gonna fold it. And then I will fold here. Now, I have to also keep in mind how wide this is gonna be. And this is one, two, three, four, five. So this is gonna be just over five. So that'll work great for what I want. If I needed it to be bigger, I could fold out this way or I can fold, or I can even trim off a little bit because it's, you know, you're not set in stone. But I don't really want those eggs to show. So when I make my choice, I'm going to fold just up to the egg mark, hold it in place, and then, where's my bone fold? And then I'll score it down just like that. And then I can round the corners or not. I can use a double policy closure. And all I, I usually use for these size, I use my three quarter inch circle punch, punch um, a scrap a couple times, and then use that if I'm doing two. Again, you can just use one policy closure and an eyelet. You can use no policy closures and use Velcro. You can use one policy closure and bring it around from the back, which is because this is so thin, that's probably what I would do here. Or again, you can use the double policy closure. So you, you kind of have the options. For this one, I think I would probably bring it around from the back and put my, and the way you make these is, I'm, I'm sure you guys know and you're thinking, Corey, really, you're showing me, but just for the sake of, whoops, just for the sake of, because uh, somebody hasn't seen it, I have a piece of scrap in there. It doesn't want to come out. Oh, there we go. All right, just punch. Uh, doesn't really matter what side that'll work. I punch a couple circles. I said I was going to do a couple uh, single on this one, so I punch a couple circles. Two, three, doesn't really matter. I kind of like the way that looks with it, so I think I'll make that one on top. But then again, this is a nice contrast too. Nope, I want this one on top. Oh, that one's pretty good too. So you have a choice. Just decide which one you want on top. I think I like that. I'm going to put that on top. And what I do when I glue these is I glue around the edge because I'm wanting these to be stacked on each other. Stick them in my fingers to hold it stuck. I want these to be closed. Now when I'm putting it on, I wrap it, I circle it around my fingers to make sure it lines up. 
and then I let it dry for a moment and then I'll ink the edges. When I put it on my book, depending on, well, either way, depending on how I close it, if I'm going to put a eyelid in there, I'll line it up where I want it. I'll ink the edges first. So I'll line it up where I want it and then I will put a dot in the middle because I'm going to punch that out. Um, it's not going to stay that way if I'm going to put an eyelet or a brad. I'll put a little dot in the middle to hold it in place and then I'll punch either with my hand punch or my needle, punch a hole and then attach it either with my eyelet or my brad. I'll take a piece of string, bring it around the top and circle. Now, I use thinner strings, so I don't need much of a gap between these two. And just by putting the dot of glue in the middle, I still have plenty of area to lift with the string. And that's all there is to it. That's that's the option, or those are the different options with this belly band with the journaling spot. And then again, you can do whatever you want. I could, I could make this into a tuck spot or I could have it flip open and put a tuck spot on the inside or I could cover this whole thing which is what I'd probably do and then do like I did with the other ones do a journaling pad or a journaling card or, you know, your options are endless but this gives you a great way to use up some 12 by 12 paper and gives you options based on what your journaling needs are all right that is done okay Etsy shop now normally when I load things in my Etsy shop, it's a fundraiser for my students. I buy books or, you know, well, a couple times I've done other things for students based on their needs, but it's all been student related. And this time I'm doing something a little bit different. Since December, early December, I've lost five people. And when I was at a scrapbook, not a scrapbook retreat, a women's retreat many, many years ago, the guest speaker said, we have friends for a reason, a season, or a lifetime. And that really stuck with me because all of them are important and all of them are valuable. And all of the five people that I lost were friends, season friends. You know, my season of scrapbooking and teaching at conventions and stuff was uh, the recent lady who passed away. And when somebody dies unexpectedly like that, oh, the oldest of all of the people that recently, that passed away in the last month and a half was 55. So they were all 55 and younger, so way, way too young. Anyway, when people die unexpectedly, there's a lot of cost involved, either with the health care or the cost of the services or the loss of the income to the family or what have you. So what I thought I would do, and I've had these in the works for a long time, and I was going to use them for my books, for my kids, but I've decided that instead I want to use these, the proceeds from these, to you know, help the families just a little bit. So any, any sales from this, the proceeds after shipping costs and such, will go to those various families. And this is what it is. So I've got 37 of these. These are the Scrap and Stamp Cluster Books. Stop and sc scrap and Stamp Cluster Books. They originally started life as Scrap Cluster Books, and then I started making the stamp clusters, and so they evolved a little bit. And I also wanted them to function as a journal. So when you've used up the, the cluster making pieces, I still didn't want it to just be an empty thing. So I made it into a journal and I'll, I'll walk you through that. They're all essentially the same. Some of them, some of them close on the top. Some of them close on the inside. They all have Velcro closures. There's a couple exceptions when I was trying to figure out the format that I wanted for this. So two of them are slightly modified, but they're the, still the same size with the same pieces included. But some of the closures are under, some of the closures are on top. There's one that's a magnet. Most of them are Velcro, but they're essentially the same thing. They all have a cluster, a scrap cluster of some sort on the top. They have a closure. And then when you open the booklet, uh, maybe I'll zoom in a little bit so you can see what I'm talking about. When you open the book, there is... Uh, a section of lace. Now, some, all of them have vintage lace, and I think all of them have antique lace as well. But that, like this, this was um, a wedding dress that I found at a Goodwill outlet for nothing. A song. I washed it in hot water and then cut it into. There was a big old stain in it, and so I cut it into strips, and it's fabulous and it huge. It was in the 50s, I believe, because yards and yards and yards of this gorgeous lacy fabric. So I've got a section of that, and then the rest are just various bits. Like this is, uh, I think it's vintage, but it could be antique of hand crocheted cotton that I got in. Alabama last year, I believe. Anyway, and then this is vintage seam binding and 
uh, sorry silk and lace. So there's there's a little pad of laces that you can use in both your stamp and scrap clusters. Then the next page has at least five tickets now, different kinds of tickets. Maybe it's a Tim Holtz ticket, maybe it's a Taperology ticket, maybe it's a printed ticket, but there's five different kinds of tickets and a paperclip closure. Next page has a scrap paper pad. And again, on this, there's just a variety of textures and colors and styles. This one happens to be corrugated cardboard. I believe they all have piano roll. Piano roll, coffee dyed paper, um, some thin, paper vintage or antique like in this case this is a 1870s German paper uh, I think there's 10 sheets maybe there's 12 I don't remember textured paper packing paper anyway there's there's pay pieces of paper to use in scrap and stamp clusters you just tear them off and use them then there's the journal part so all those little clusters that you make and all those little bits and pieces you I think I think there's 10 pages in each one because that's my magic number and they're sewn in through with a sewing machine right down the center of that spine so there's a journal in there and then you go to the next page and there are two there's a tuck on the side so again once these pieces are all used up you still got a usable journal there are 10 plus because I got tired of counting honestly 10 plus pieces of postage stamp and they're from all over the world and all different kinds and I, I started making stacks of postage stamps so some of them will have a cancellation piece some of them will have uh, different images on them uh, Nevada statehood I d d just randomly picked them they are a whole bunch all like I said all over the world and you'll have at least 10 I think there's more like 12 or so but uh, at least 10 postage stamps right and then there's a, a stamp cluster in each packet showing how I combined the ticket, a bit of the lace. Uh, this one happens to have two tickets or a cancellation piece and a stamp to make a stamp cluster. So each little kit, and they're all different. None of them are the same. So there's a little bag, glassing, I guess it's not glassing, whatever this is, plastic bag. They're archival bags, so you could put photos in them. I did that intentionally, but there's a little baggie of that. And then there is a bag of die cuts. And I think there's seven die cuts in here. You'd think after making them all, I would know. But I believe there's seven die cuts. And again, same type of bag. And I've got a, a dark color, a black one. And then I've got several white ones, um, different sizes. And I chose flowers that were easy to color and sturdy. So like when you color them, and, I mean, if you saturate them in ink or paper, they might fall apart. But this is thicker cardstock, cardstock I had purchased to run through my printer that was too thick to my, for my printer. And they're, I believe most are all the same. And these are the ones that I found were the sturdiest and easiest to color. So don't, if you're gonna put it in ink, you can color them with pencils, you can color them with crayons, you can color them with inks, your ink pads, watercolors, whatever you want. I've got videos that show you but just don't saturate them because again, they are paper. So you've got those. And then there is one that is newsprint, our book print, vintage book print, that has been embossed with Seth Apter Vintage Beeswax. And then there's one, a tulip. I got did a tulip for everybody that has been colored, layered, because this tulip dye has two layers. And then Seth after vintage beeswax so you get all of those as well and in that bag is also a sample of a scrap cluster so you get the pieces and a sample of the scrap cluster all right that is the inside and then there's a second paper clip with a piece of that vintage uh, dress wedding dress lace on it and then the back has two well again there's a couple that are slightly different but they're very close. The back has a couple envelopes, and in one envelope, it's just random Tracy labels. And now these aren't all Tracy Fox, obviously. A lot of them are, uh, you know, Tim Holtz paper that were cut up, but they're all basically labels, and they're the same kind I use in my scrap clusters and my stamp clusters. So at least 10 labels. Again, I didn't count, so I got tired of counting after a while, and so you may have more, but there are at least 10 in every single one. So that's that one. And then in this little envelope are more pieces that you 
can use in your scrap and stamp clusters. There are, I think, seven of the whale tail punches and some neutral colors. Some have random colors. There's at least two or three coffee dyed, at least two or three neutral color, and one black in each one. Um, and again, most of them have just a random color too because I just used the scraps that I had. So there's seven of those. And then there's two of these file folder punches and they are both on craft card stock. And I'll show you in just a second how to fold those. And then two of the mini index that have been coffee dyed. When you get these, there <clears throat> are the tabs, so they're the mini, <clears throat> excuse me, mini file folders, but there is a tiny little nick on each side. And now you can score it there, but I generally just fold it. But that tells you where your fold line is. That gives you an indicator where your fold line is. And then you just fold it in half. And then you can use it as a drop down. You can glue the sides like I do and use it as a tuck and a pocket, how, what, however you want to use it. But there are two of those in there as well. All right, those will be loaded. There's 37 of them. And they, I am not going to, I originally thought, well, I'll just photograph each one. No, no, because they're all different and I'm not opening, I'm just not. They all look like this to some degree or other. You have the same pieces, but with different images on the pieces. I'm showing you this one simply because I think out of all the 12 by 12 Tim Holtz paper, this is my favorite. All of them are made from 12 by 12 Tim Holtz paper. And the measurements on these are four by six. And, oh, they are $5 to ship in the U.S. I cheated and took it to the post office to see. And that was Florida, which is the, the farthest place from me in Washington. So they're $5 to ship, and I'm going to include the shipping in the cost. And I'm going to charge $35 apiece for them. And that'll include, like I said, that'll include your shipping. And I tried to keep it reasonable, and some people might say that's too spending, and some might say it's you know not enough, whatever. But the idea is I wanted to keep them so that people could purchase them because, again, it's a fundraiser. And they are packaged like this, so with chipboard on the front and back. And because I live in the Pacific Northwest, I always put them in a plastic bag and tape it closed. So hopefully, if it does get wet, it won't, yeah, it won't ruin anything. And here's just another one. See, same idea. Let's see, this one has one pocket on the back, so that must mean it has two pockets inside. Oh, this is the one with the magnet. I, I chose this one because it was a little bit heavier. But you see, you still get the exact same pieces, and everything is essentially the same. You just a little bit different configuration. So whew, that, I will load those in my Etsy shop when I'm done with this video and there are 37 of them and to be honest if you're interested i would encourage you to to get one well, not because you, sh you should get one but if you want one because i doubt i will make these again these took me a long time to make and i enjoyed it and i'm super glad that i'm going to be able to use it for people who can need it but uh, they also all have washi tape at the end where they were sewn and yeah and they all have different well you know what maybe i'll just do that real quick i'll show you them real quick so you can see they all have I'll go through them super quick they all have a cluster on the front and different closures some are tucked under this one just had an itty bitty one because it really focused on the bird which I thought was cool uh, my big old thumbs are in the way so you don't can't see the covers but different clusters different flowers this one I don't know why I had a bee on here but somebody with a bee will get this one and uh, with the, uh, the first name B and if there's nobody with first name B, I'll, I'll change it up. And this one, I thought that one was really pretty too with that paper. Most of these papers are memoranda, but I think there's some wall, well, wallflower and memoranda are the papers that were used in this. And there might be some others. That's the nice thing about the Tim Holtz paper. They all work pretty darn well together. Some have labels, some do not. All of them have a bit of lace of some sort or other. Um, we're just a variety of clusters on the front. Some of them are bigger, some of them are smaller, just based on whatever the need was. And again, I keep sticking my thumb in there. Sorry about that. Some are more floral than others. Some are more feminine than others, but they, they're all essentially the same thing. I thought this one was really cool with that birdie. I don't know why I like it. And a butterfly up above him. Another one, and again, a small one. 
And another one with that yellow paper. All right. And another bin. So I'll go through these the same way really quick. But they're all done. They're ready. I'm, when, when I get orders, I'm just going to pop one in an envelope. And I also have a huge stack of these. So the chipboard, they will go between some chipboards. So hopefully it will arrive fairly safely. There are those two. So I think the only one with that teal scrap. I thought that was pretty because it stood out. And most of them have die cuts on the front, but not all do. Some use other images with some Nouveau Deluxe Crystal Glaze. But all of them, all of them have a scrap cluster included inside. Oh, I drew a blank on her name. I'll, I'll mention her in another video. There's a lady. Oh, I can't believe I'm sorry about that. She makes these tatted pieces and they're absolutely incredible. Love them. And I ordered some off her Etsy shop. You know what? I'll put the name of her Etsy shop in the link below because I always edit this afterwards. I'll put her Etsy link below so in case you want some tatty. And she has a variety of different ones, but they're real pretty. So there's that. And that one, this one just uses one of those stamped images. And that was a lot of fun and another variation of ways to make clusters. So there are those. Again, my video is getting too long. I apologize. This one's got the butterfly with the bulb pin on it. I thought that was kind of cool. Collage medium. Tim Holtz collage medium holds that in place beautifully. And I thought that one was kind of pretty with the oranges and browns. I mean, I like them all, but I there was one I didn't care for, so I didn't include it. I mean, maybe somebody else would like it, but I didn't love it, so I didn't include it. But the rest of these, I like them all. And I loved this little uh, Carrie Fellows from Witchcraft Do You Do has these little itty bitty butterflies and love a variety of colors. Love them. And there we go again with it. And there's this isn't tatting, this is vintage lace. I thought that was just lovely. And here we go. And, oh, there is another piece with it teal. So there's there's all of these. And I will start shipping these as soon as the orders come in. The other thing I did was I finished about 25 of the ink boxes. And they are all the three whole ink boxes. Except for a couple people who would ask, them, one lady asked me for four and another lady asked me not to stain hers. So I did that. I have pieces cut to do one and two hole ink boxes too. I just did not assemble them because three by three, the three hole was by far the most popular, but I have them all. They won't ship for a couple days simply because this time of year, you know, it's in the forties, sometimes thirties for thirties and forties in Washington where I live. And it takes the stain a while to dry, but most of them are the three hole. And I had to, I, bu I bought more three quarter inch plywood and more of the hemlock trim and wood prices have gone up crazily. So I'm going to include shipping just for the sake of ease. The one hole will be $30 shipped, two hole will be $35 shipped, and three hole will be $40 shipped. And that's in the US. Shipping internationally is insane. It probably costs more than the ink boxes. So I apologize for that, but I do have a video that shows you how I make them if you're interested. This one you'll notice, oh, it's a little different, Corey. Well, this is one of my first ones. This is one of my first prototypes, which is why I haven't sold it. But it this one shows that like if you have the Ramblin' Crafter hand tool, it fits in there beautifully. And I don't know, the this is one and a half inches. And I don't know if the Sugar Bell bottles will fit in here or not. One lady asked me for that. And I don't know if it'll fit because I don't have a Sugar Bell bottle. But it's a one and a half inch diameter, so it should. It, it, in theory, it should. But the others are one and a quarter. And they hold the glue stick and the small bottles and then the Tim Holtz ink dauber. All of these, all of the current ones are three quarters of an inch and they're designed so that when you take the lid off, if you're wanting to stamp a stamp pad right there, it's flush. You can just put it right there and you're good to go. This one was one of my first prototypes and this was because I liked the idea of being able to double stack it. So I use two different colors most of the time, right? And then the lid comes off and then again, same thing, you can double stack it. So I've got this one random um, one available if you've got a Ramblin' Crafter and if you want to double stack it. If you don't tap, tap your stamps on there, you don't need it flush, then this works great. But if you want it flush, this one is not a flush one. Just send me a message on Etsy or my email 
and it, it, if you want this one and, and I'll send it to you but um, otherwise if you're wanting a one hole or a two hole send me a message say hey Corey I'd really like a one hole or a two hole and in within a week or so I've, like I said I've got them cut I just didn't assemble them because I didn't know if anybody would want that size like I said three holes by far the most popular size because it seems like most of us use glue stick and some kind of a wet glue and then uh, a sponge dauber I was going to show you something okay now I, you guys have seen, for those of you who watch my channel, I use this all the time and sometimes it's wood and it gets dried out. This is Big Mama's Butter, Orange Grove just because of the scent. But Big Mama's Butter as it is, is what it's called and it's by Dixie Bell Paint Company. And it's this really cool smelling orange stuff and what it does is it revitalizes your wood. It's kind of like, you know, uh, wood polish, I suppose. There's other things you can use. You can use tongue oil, you can use... Uh, varnish you can use anything you want but but the idea is it just quickly and easily and that is why i use an ink box because it rolls just a little bit rub it on with your finger and if your wood is looking dry or cracked it will and this works with other woods pieces too not just your ink box but it kind of makes it renewed you can see i've spilled on this i've used this for a year i came up with this about a year ago but it just kind of review renews the wood like here you go you can see what the wood looks like it's kind of dry and just a little bit of this you rub it in and you rub it off and it basically oils the wood and it just gives it a pretty sheen again and just makes it look nice and not dry and crack so there you go there's a tip i will load those 25 ink boxes today but again they will not ship probably till wednesday is my guess simply because the stain has to dry. I mean, it doesn't have to dry, but it smells really bad. I mean, it's stain, it's wet stain, so it stinks. And I've had people say, because what happens is the ink when I stain them gets trapped in here. And sometimes it takes a little bit longer to dry. And I've had people say when they arrive, oh my gosh, the stain was the smell, just let it sit out for a couple days. Well, I would just as soon skip you having to smell the bad stain or this bad smell and um, let it finish curing here and then ship it to you. So if you're interested, the proceeds for the ink boxes and the scrap and stamp cluster books are all going to those families that I mentioned. I've got more things coming up. Oh, ah, one more thing. Ah, see, I knew I forgot something. Sorry, I had to grab it because I'd put it back over here. All right. It used to be two for five, but because shipping has gone up, and these to ship, two pieces to ship is between 95 cents and $1.30, just depending. So I'm gonna do two for six. And again, the proceeds of all of these three different items, the ink boxes, the stamp and scrap cluster books that are also journals, and then these two for six are all going, not to my readers this time, they're going to the families who have lost a loved one. Okay what you will get two for six you will get two random pieces one of them will have a cluster on it and it can be an item with a scrap cluster like this this is just a little scrap pad booklet scrap paper with a cluster on it so you'll get that and then maybe i don't know something without a cluster like i don't know uh, let's pull something down below maybe you'll get this a oh, little little note card right with a tuck spot in the back and a little note card so two things six dollars shipped one will be a have a scrap cluster on it now i've also got some loose scrap clusters so you may get something like this and then a blank piece like a tag or a label or something and then a loose scrap cluster that you can choose to put on it but you will get a you will get two items two completed items or three pieces to complete two items in each envelope and it's going to be two items for six dollars all the proceeds to that will also go to those families all right and those well you can see there are i had enough i don't know for 150 but i'm going to do 50 because i'm mailing out 44 random racks in honor of a lady from the scrapbooking world who passed away unexpectedly from covid complications recently and i um so 44 racks are going out to various viewers. And so if you get one, it's done in the name of Tanya. Um, 
so 50 of these will be listed. So I'll have 50 of these, 37 of the scrap and stamp, I, um, scrap and stamp cluster books. And then I think I said 25 of the three by ink boxes. All right, that's all I've got. I've got more videos coming. I've got more ideas coming. I plan to have these six by six scrap buster idea books done by the end of February. That's my goal. I don't know if we can make it happen, but I should because they're already works in progress. And then I, in February, I also intend to share what my version of the full, the uh, uh, February Friday folio. I'm just blowing that. I, I buried it wherever it is, Tracy Fox's video that I'm going to link below too. So I think that's all for now. Thank you for watching. Take care and happy creating.